So now we'll get started with that second lab that we have for day two. This one, labeled as part two on page 31 in the workbook, is for the nipper tool. Now the nipper tool is a really powerful tool. I greatly prefer it over the uh, over rat for two reasons. One is a uh, rat is certainly aging, though I do keep it in the class, uh, well, one, because someone else writes this day, but secondly, because the Center for Internet Security remains a relevant organization, and they do say that they will be releasing updates to it. Nipper, however, has changed hands and become a commercial tool, but even so, this is a very, very powerful tool, and the version we'll be using is their uh, previously free version. It's still available because at the time it was released as open source, and there are still some resources out there you can locate to find it. In addition, we have a copy of it on the DVD, and the report it gives you is far more detailed. If you really like it, though, you should seriously consider getting in touch with these folks. They're at titania.co.uk and buying a license for their tool because it is quite powerful. There are other uh, vendors out there as well. Athena Security, for instance, Red Seal. There's a whole bunch of folks in this marketplace, though I typically won't use their firewall grading tools. But the reason for that I'll get into a little bit later on in the course as we're going through the material. Now though, let's dive into this nipper. So as you can see, I've left the screen where it was from our last lab. I'm going to close up that shell for rat, and I now need to get nipper installed. So it lets us know that to get ready, there's an installer, or, or a um, there's a uh, not an installer, but instead the file we need is going to be found again in that tools directory. And this time we're looking for this folder right here, nipper in one zero dot one two dot six. I have no idea why that's the name of the directory. That's the name of the directory that they used when they released it, though. So if I open that up, I can see two things in here. First, we have this whole thing zipped up, so you can easily copy this off of the DVD and use it somewhere else. But we also have all of the supporting files. Rather than mess around with this, I'm going to go back one directory, and I'm going to simply copy this entire folder down into the class files folder that I created during the last lab. And again, I'm going to hold down the control key so that it just copies it instead of moves it, and then close up that directory. So we now need a command prompt. Let me simply start up a command prompt. There we are. And I'm going to move into that directory. So that's located off of the C drive in a folder named class files in another folder named nipper in one zero one two dot six. Now you may notice how quickly I managed to type those paths. In case it's been a while since you've used a command line, let me just remind you that for quite some time now we have been able to use tab completion within a Windows environment. That means that if you begin typing a command and then hit just one or two letters of the next part, which is in this case a path name or file name, and hit the tab key, it will auto-complete out. And when it does auto-complete out, you can also have it loop through possibilities. For instance, this isn't a great example, but let me just show you what I mean. Let me type D-I-R-N. And if I hit tab one time, it says nipper.exe, but notice in the directory listing that there are other things with an N. If I hit tab again, it shows me the next one and the next one, so it will loop through those allowing you for, to select the create com correct completion. If you hit the escape key, it'll delete that text. Okay, so at this point we've got Nipper ready to run. I'm moving now on to page uh, 32. Oh, we've already started the command prompt. Page 33. So on page 33, it's asking us to run the Nipper tool against the router configuration file. Now, the command line that's there in the in the workbook there's nothing really wrong with it, but it's a little bit incomplete. It's assuming at this point that the router configuration is in the same directory that we are with the nipper tool, and that's not true. The router configuration is one directory below this named routerconfig.txt. Well, we can get around this. We'll run the nipper tool. Now let me first make a mistake. If I just run nipper with no options, you may expect it to give you some help. Or if you were to double click on Nipper, for instance, with your, with your uh, navigator, that also would create this situation where it just sits and looks at you. And the reason is that Nipper supports pipelining. 
That means that you can pass a configuration into the input and have it pass the output or results into the output. So if you fail to specify a valid option and fail to specify an input file, it assumes that it should be waiting on standard input for you to type in a router configuration, which we do not plan to do. So I'll just hit Control Z, which is how you indicate an end of file within a Windows environment, at which point it says, oh, uh, hey, I couldn't figure out what that was, because it wasn't a valid config. If we actually wanted to see help, though, we could give it a dash, uh, uh, let's see here, whoops. I don't need the dot slash. I'm acting like I'm using Unix here. I could add a dash H option. Oh, helps if I put a dash there. Uh, oh, sorry, dash dash help. There we are. And it'll give me a lot of details on how to use the tool. And we can even get additional help on each one of these options. However, we have the options that we need to do the lab already spelled out for us. I encourage you to research what other options are available as part of a project for yourself in connection with the class. Now, for now though, let's get this running. We want to specify that it's coming out of an iOS router. We're telling you that that's the kind of device it came from. I need to specify the input, and that's going to be from the directory below this, routerconfig.txt, there it is. And I want to specify the output, and I'm going to put the output in the directory below as well, which is not what the, the lab directions say, but that's okay. We can put them wherever we'd like. And I'll call this nipperresults.html. Off it goes. Now that was pretty fast, but it is already done. In order to take a look at that file, let's just go down a directory. I can see there is now a file named uh, there it is, nipperresults.html, it shows up right here. And in the lab, it actually suggests you do something kind of interesting. It's different than what we did the last time. The last time what we did was go over here into our file browser and double clicked on the file. But there's sort of a cool thing that Windows supports. If you simply type that file name, and that file name is a known file type that it knows what to do with, it will actually open it in the correct program. So if you did that with a Microsoft Word document, it would open Word. If you did it with an Excel document, it would open Excel. It's just a cool little feature that's available from the command line. But now at this point, we can again see the report that comes back in Nipper. And as you can see, the report that we get here is quite detailed. If we scroll on down, the actual reporting of what happened seems to start uh, begin showing up here at section 2.2 and shows us how serious the problem might be. Though remember, you should just use this as a, uh, as a yardstick, maybe a rule of thumb uh, measurement, and instead do some analysis yourself to see how serious the problem is for your organization, because it will depend on how this maps over to what your organization's policies and procedures are. Now again, I'm not going to uh, go through and answer all of the questions that we have there about the most critical findings and why it was the most critical. Instead, I'll leave that as an exercise for you to do with the lens of your own organization. Though if you need some help or some pointers, please do feel free to let me know. I also encourage you that if you have access to any router or switch configurations or any of the supported firewall configurations, why not see if you can get a copy of them and run them through Nipper? see what it finds for you. It really is a very powerful tool, and as I've said a couple of times, these labs are really just the starting point for you. You should not consider them to be, uh, you know, I did what the lab said, so I'm done, because we really want you to be able to use this right away within your business. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. In our next set, we're going to start taking a look at firewall validation, which will be posted in the next set of labs.